So it says we are live and um, I have it muted. So it's there. Um, says one watching. So that's me. So start it again. Hi. Uh, welcome anyone who is tuning in now or later for this uh, Starkle Planetarium, uh, Starkle Live Eclipse Chat. This is different than the lives that I've been doing where I use the OBS software. This is using Zoom so that uh, both Eric and I can be on here. Eric, of course, being the director here of the Starkle Planetarium. And we we are here to talk about eclipses and I'm checking my phone also to make sure that uh, um, my husband is able to tune in. He is the test audience. So how about now? Okay. Um, let's see and see if there's a chat available. Okay. This one does display, Eric, this one does display on my side that it looks uh, normal on here. Um, are you muted? I was temporarily, but I oh. unmuted myself. <laughs> okay, I was just I didn't letting you be... talk. That's all. Okay, yeah, I didn't want to be the one talking. It says two are watching now, so that's probably um, me monitoring here and Jeff watching. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you, Eric. Okay, great. Yeah, so. Um, I'm guessing some people have some familiarity with uh, eclipses um, and I will show you how things are going to look during uh, the solar eclipse on Saturday if we have optimal observing conditions. Right now the forecast tells us that we may be fighting a lot more clouds than we would like, um, but you might be finding some live streams around the world and at least you will get to see it, what it could look like if these conditions were a little bit better. Um, so I have set up the software Stellarium here and you are looking at a little, um, uh, a landscape picture that Waylena actually uh, took uh, and set up that I could use in Stellarium, very similar to the one that we use in the planetarium itself. And I have set the time to about 1040. Um, I actually had it from about 10 minutes earlier, but now the eclipse has actually begun. If you look at this image of the sun, you see the glare of the sun there, and that dark patch there is showing that the glare is being blocked a bit by the moon. But when I click on the sun, center it, and start to zoom in, you will see that the moon has just barely started to encroach on the appearance of the sun. So this is a sort of view that you would not be able to get with your own eyes because you would be very quickly uh, getting your retinas damaged by staring this long. And plus, the sun's not that big in the sky. It's actually, you could cover it entirely with your fingernail, in fact. Um, but if you had proper instruments or the eclipse glasses that uh, Waylena is uh, possibly going to show you in a few minutes, um, you would be able to see the uh, appearance look like this. Uh, this is not any sort of live view of the sun. Those sunspots are what we've seen on the sun in the past. So it's just to show you the sort of typical view of the sun you might get. Now, as we go forward in time, I'm going to actually keep the time up here like this so you can all see it very easily. Um, and we will go forward in time here just a little bit faster than usual. You see the moon going over the sun, but here in Illinois, we're not going to see the sun get covered up very much. It'll be actually less than 50% coverage, as a matter of fact. The time now is after 11 a.m. Um, the maximum amount of eclipse that we'll get in Champaign will happen right before local noon. I'm sorry, right before noon, not local noon. Um, it'll uh, happen at about, I think, 11.58 a.m., something like that. And the sun will get covered by only about 47% from around here. So you see it's almost right around there. So it doesn't look like a whole lot. You see that it's a, just kind of a glancing blow in a way. Um so yeah, we're seeing that this would be the extent of that eclipse. But even then, these are extremely rare events. Uh, aside from that total solar eclipse that we had in 2017, 
it wasn't total in Champagne. 92% of the sun was covered. Uh, there was a previous partial solar eclipse that we got to see in Champagne way back in 2014, also in October, actually. Um, so they're not that often seen. Um, so yeah, the uh, eclipse will completely end around here for us uh, right around 1.30 p.m. Um, I hope there will be some moments where maybe the sun peeks out through the clouds so we can see a little bit of this, um, but I cannot, I, I'm not getting my hopes up too much after I've seen, having seen the recent forecasts. Now, um, I've been talking for several minutes. Uh, Wayland, did you want to chime in before I show what this eclipse will look like in other parts of, the, of uh, North America where it will look really interesting? Um. Not so much. Um, we have just shared this to Facebook to let folks know that we're over here. I know we were hoping to broadcast to Facebook, but that didn't work out. But we still had the setup for YouTube. Um, let's see. So um, if, for anyone just joining, um, you'll be able to see um, if you back up, uh, if you're watching live right now, you can back up later. Um, Eric described a little bit about what it is that we're going to see or not see from here in Champaign, given that we have, uh, you know, iffy weather that's going to happen. But also it wouldn't be the absolute best case view of this eclipse. And so he he's going to demonstrate using Stellarium what you can expect to see from other places. Um, Eric mentioned that um, there are live streams out there of the eclipse, and um, I have some links that I'll be sharing. Um, since this is going to be on YouTube, I'll share them in the uh, description, um, you know, after this gets uh, finished. And um, also after we talk about uh, the, let's see, Eric's going to show the what's going to happen with the eclipse. Um, we got a few notes on safely viewing the eclipse. And that's where the eclipse glasses come in. These are my favorites. Um, we'll also reshare a video that was made by um, that was put out through the uh, through NASA's uh, Science Visualization Studio uh, for, platform on safe. Uh, solar observing and how to tell if your glasses are safe. Um, I have, a, we also sell this kind, but this is one that we do not, would not sell this particular one. I use this as an example. You can't see it very well, I don't think in the video, but it got creased because it got folded across. So it's not to be used. So I only keep this as an example of do not use this one. Um, so we'll have a little bit about safety. And also, I've got a few things that I'm going to share of um, how you can participate in some citizen science as an observer, but also, also ways that you can participate in a citizen science project that um, will let you actually collect some data for the next eclipse, which Eric is also going to be talking about. That's going to be a big one, another total solar eclipse that will not be total for us here in Champaign, but totality is not very far away at all. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you, Eric, uh, if uh, if you're ready to, to go. Um, I think you might be talking to a cat or a dog off camera. Um, you want me to keep talking? Uh, no, it's all right. Okay. I can okay. now. Thank you for your patience. Um, I just didn't want to interrupt with those things. So anyways, um, I'm going to share the screen one more time so everybody can see what changes I've made. Um, we're still using Stellarium again, and you're going to see what it looks like here. So this now is actually location has been changed to San Antonio. San Antonio lies in the path of what we call annularity. So we don't have a total eclipse on Saturday. Um, we won't have any place on Earth that can see the moon completely block the sun and give the amazing views that people might have seen in 2017 or are looking forward to seeing in April of next year. So instead, you're going to see something really weird happen from here. Um, and no, I this is not the what you see on the ground around San Antonio. This is actually, I just needed some ground. I'm pretty sure this is a, uh, 
uh, uh, some field that you would find in Germany. Um, but I, I just didn't want the planetarium to be visible there to make people think that the Starco Planetarium just lifted off and flew out to uh, to Texas. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the sun once again. And this is at 934 in the morning. And we uh, go forward in time here. And in San Antonio, you see that the partial eclipse will begin at about 1030 once again. I'm going a lot faster this time. And we get to the point of around noon time. And notice the moon is lining up much better. But one thing that you might notice right before this point of interest is that you can see that the silhouette of the moon is not big enough to cover all of the sun. So since the moon doesn't have a perfectly circular orbit, there are times when the moon is a little farther from us and times when the moon is a little bit closer to us. Um, so those times when it's closer, it appears bigger, and that would be the times when the moon could actually appear larger than the sun. This is a point where the moon is much farther from us, near the point that we would call apogee, um, where the moon appears much smaller and the moon is not able to block all the sun. So in a couple minutes, watch what happens in San Antonio, right there. So this here, where you see uh, the sun around that silhouette of the moon, the sun ends up forming this ring shape, all right? Um, the name that we give for this sort of event, we call it an annulus. That just comes from the Latin word meaning ring, and we call this, therefore, an annular eclipse. It sounds a lot like annual eclipse, and it makes people think that eclipses happen every year, but no, it's, it's just a coincidence that those words sound so similar to each other, annual, annular, okay? Um, and this is the one that a lot of people like to call a ring of fire eclipse. Uh, sure, it's a ring, um, but the sun is not really on fire. It's just really, 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 really hot. Okay. But that's what they will be able to see for several minutes in San Antonio. Look at that. Okay. And there's a path of annularity that exists um, that will be uh, occurring going from the northwestern part of the U.S. going down to Texas. And all those people will be able to see the moon uh, forming, that, having the sun form an annulus around the moon for a couple of minutes uh, as the moon appears to pass in front of the sun like that. And in San Antonio, the eclipse will end at about the same time that we have here on Earth. All right, we'll stop that. Okay. So yeah, so that was um, what they would see there. And there are many places uh, on Earth where you can see that sort of event occur. Okay, I remember my very first um, uh, solar eclipse where I was really paying attention to what was going on. That was in 1994, and it was an annular eclipse. And it was, I was in Toledo, so I was right there, you know, the... Uh, Got to see the the the, the ring. Uh, it was wonderful. Um, I remember looking at uh, looking at the ground because we were inside watching projection from a solar uh, telescope. But then at the height of uh, annularity, there we ran outside and uh, just all the little eclipses that were all over the ground from coming through the trees. Oh, I just got so choked up. Uh, it, was, it was just one of the most beautiful things that I had ever seen. Nice. Um, and I know that we've been seeing uh, people show demos uh, using, um, oh, colanders were really popular in 2017. And using pieces of pegboard, uh, you can also use any kind of thick cardboard where you've got a hole punch uh, punched made in it, and then you can uh, just let the sunlight go to, go through it and look at the ground, and then see uh, the uh, projection of the eclipse. And I remember I did that with a partial. Um, it was partial from from where I was in um, 2000. I know a long time ago. <laughs> Is that on Christmas Day? It was. It yeah. was. Middle of Christmas dinner. Um, we paused and the whole family got, I had brought plenty of eclipse glasses. So the whole family went, went on the porch and we looked. So that was kind of uh, kind of a neat thing. Um, 
So you know, tell us a little bit about the uh, upcoming eclipse, the one, not the closest upcoming, but the one in April, the big one. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one because of uh, the possibilities of who will actually lie in the path of totality on April 8th. Um, this goes through a much more populated portion of our country, um, heading up from uh, through Mexico, going up through Texas, uh, and then it goes through southern Illinois again, but it goes straight over Indianapolis, it goes over Toledo, <laughs> it goes over Cleveland, and it goes over Buffalo, and it goes uh, into Canada. Um, so there's a lot more people who don't have as far to go to be in that path of totality. Okay. And the picture that's behind Waylena right now is a picture of um, the part where the total eclipse really just begins. That glare that you see on the upper right is the diamond ring effect where the uh, exposed portion of the sun is just last disappearing. Um, I'm lying because unless this is an image that's reversed, that's actually where it reappears. I admit, sorry about that. I just didn't even think about <laughs> that point. But that's at the very beginning or at the very end of the eclipse right there. So the sun is not bright enough to completely wash away that point that we see the corona around the moon right there. The corona is only visible to us if the main portion of the sun, the brightest portion of the sun, the part that we call the photosphere, is completely blocked or almost like 99.99% blocked by the moon, like you can see in that shot. Yeah. Um, what else can I say with that? Um, this eclipse, uh, I am, I'm very, uh, what's the word? What would I say? I'm very measured in my hope for it being clear that day. <laughs> because it's going to be early spring and early spring means a high percentage of cloud cover around here um but you know if it happens to be clear at that moment that's that's a great chance to see a nice long eclipse and i you know there are people who didn't get the chance to see it in 2017 so i want to give people that opportunity um and then if it does actually happen, I do like the chance that uh, I think the traffic will be a lot better than what it was in 2017, too. <laughs> um, so again, what's the eclipse is behind me. And that's yeah. a photo that was taken in 2017 by uh, my husband, Jeff Bryant, who's the one who said hi in the chat a moment ago. And uh, that is not what we're going to be having here this weekend. So no. that's total that's solar eclipse what's behind yeah. me. And but that is what can be viewed in April of this next year if you're along the right path and you have the good weather for it. Yeah, you can't do anything about the weather. Uh, all you can do is try and make your plans and then adapt your plans at the last minute. Uh, but the eclipse this weekend. Okay, so the weather's not looking good for that, but uh, it'll be a nice partial eclipse from uh, Illinois. And again, yeah, maybe maybe we will get some moment where the sun peeks through the clouds a little bit. You know, that that can happen. Um, so that's what we're looking forward to. Um, let's see. Anything else that you wanted to say, Eric, before I talk um, a bit about some citizen science? I would say that the experience of a total eclipse is not just seeing the sun as it appears there. Looking all around the sky in that brief moment is just in a way surreal because it is like nothing else you ever see uh seeing how dim the sky gets seeing how uh even coming up to that point of totality um seeing how different colors you get the sky becomes a much like deeper blue less less of a bluish white like we normally get or a whitish blue whichever way you want to say it um you uh see the shadows end up looking very strangely sharp all around the ground um you see uh you see end up getting dim enough skies that you can actually see the brightest planets that are up um you can actually even see a few stars uh seeing how that only 70 mile wide shadow the the the, the sky is actually a lot brighter near the horizon than it is over at the top we had a lot of clouds around and it looked like it was like kind of you know a twilight sky in some ways it was just it was so baffling. Um, I didn't, you know, it was an extremely hot day, so it was hard for me to listen in on the birds. 
And of course, there was just a lot of people yelling. So it's really hard to tell like how the animals were responding to this. But animals also notice that this eclipse is occurring because, you know, light has a major effect on their uh, on their daily routine. Um, you know, there are certain animals that start to turn in around that time of day. So it's it's extremely confusing for uh, their usual, um, I guess, circadian rhythms might be the word for it. Really nice that you should mention those because that's part of what I'm going to be talking about, the citizen science uh, project that uh, I uh, had stumbled upon, but then I attended a webinar and got to hear more about it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. That was let me make sure that I'm you did that on purpose, didn't you? Oh, just to be silly, I wanted to write the word seg. <laughs> Segway. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me see. I think it's sharing. Is it sharing? Not yet. I'm seeing a shared screen now. Oh, good. It yes, I forgot something. how Zoom behaves when it does this. Very, very strange here. Um, okay, so I think we can see me here. I've, I've so the page I'm on here is the um eclipse soundscapes.org and um this is a citizen science uh, project from uh from nasa and this is the main page there are different ways that you can participate um so the whole idea of the sounds that are going on um the wherever you're at the sounds of whatever kind of nature you've got you know backyard sounds um remote area sounds whatever it is um what they're doing is collecting observations um from people during the eclipse to notice the sounds and then report on them uh but also people to take uh these little um, detectors and you can see it here uh, a picture of of one of them and place them out a couple days ahead of the eclipse all the way through to a couple days after of course that takes time to set up so you're not going to be setting any of that up even if you wanted to participate like that for the uh, eclipse this weekend but there is time if you want to be able to learn more about it to um, get involved in it that way for the April eclipse. Now I've got uh, preloaded some of the pages here, um, the different roles that they have. Um, the, there's apprentice, that's any of us can, can be that role. There's just a, a little uh, set of quizzes that you go through uh, just learning and you get a certificate when you finish. That's kind of nice. The observers, this is, this is stuff you can do, this part you can do the free online uh, observer training that you could do if you started now, you could do it before Saturday. Um, and that's what you would then report on what it is that you're observing after, after you follow their, uh, uh, sorry, follow through with the, the observer training that's, that's on here. Um, the data collectors. Now that's the complicated one, but it's pretty exciting. And when I say complicated, I just mean, it's going to take you a few weeks to be able to set that up. So, um, and demand for the devices um, there, I have not gone into this much. So I, I guess there are instructions for building your own, which could be really interesting, but I just haven't had the, the time or energy to even think about that. Um, so that's something that would be more to look forward to if you want to be involved in the, uh, data collection for the uh, April eclipse. Um, and then also people to then later on to analyze all of the data that's collected. But the observer, I, I certainly uh, will be following through this myself, going through the training. And um, just in case it clears up on a Saturday, but uh, also if I'm looking, if I'm trying to, looking to, if I'm listening for the sounds, for uh, nature to see if there's any change happening, that's gonna happen even if it's cloudy. That's gonna happen even if it's cloudy. So um, now if it's pouring rain, I'm not gonna be out with the nature. I'm gonna be inside. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's something that it's a way that we can get involved in doing science. And I definitely recommend that. Now I'm gonna be sharing these links on our well on our facebook and i'll put them certainly in the youtube uh, 
a description. But I did also want to point out, um, if you're interested in anything from the Scientific Visualization Studio, the um, um, I'll make sure to put this link in there as well. But we'll be posting the video itself again to the uh, to the Facebook. Um, how to tell if your Eclipse glasses are safe for ones that you've already already bought, because chances are ones that you bought a few years ago, if you stored them properly so that they wouldn't get any scratches or anything, they're they're still good. They're still good. Um, but if there's a chance that they got scratched up, you don't want to take the chance on using them. And this takes you through um, better than better than I could, really. I mean, how do I test them? I get up close to a really bright light source and I hold them up. And if I can see just like the filament of the light, then I know I'm OK. If I'm seeing everything around. No, then it's not good. Not good at all. Um, but this takes you through it, this video, and it's just really, really helpful. Um, also, there's a, a NASA site on eclipse safety and takes you through the, oh, there's the colanders. See all the little eclipses on there? That's pretty awesome. Nice. Um, and the box viewer, they're fun to make, but they're kind of... I find them annoying to use because to get the image looking big, you need it to be so long. Uh, yeah, I they're still fun to make, but uh, I tend to not be all that about using it. Now, this when you see a picture like this, this is somebody using a very specialized filter setup on binoculars. That is not something that I, I wouldn't even want to show that picture normally, but this is, this is a NASA site um, because it gives uh, people the impression that you could just stick eclipse glasses on your, but no, no, yeah, no, absolutely no. not. It even says right here, do not use eclipse glasses or handheld viewers with cameras, binoculars, or telescopes. They use very special different kinds of yeah. filters. Yeah. Think oh, about it. Goodness. The fact, yeah, the fact is, uh, binoculars and all other types of telescopes are designed to collect a lot more light and bring that light into your tiny little pupils. And those eclipse glasses are filtering out all that light for your pupils to collect, not for binoculars to collect. So that will get it up to a dangerous level again. And you know, a lot of heat can be built up with, uh, you know, with optics. I mean, very good. Point. How many of us have, uh, you know, burned our names into a piece of wood with a magnifying glass or accidentally mm -hmm. set a pile of leaves on? Well, maybe not everyone did that, but yeah. Um, yeah, you don't want to take any chances with your eyes. So yeah. this is really nice. There's uh, great yeah. things on these sites, and I'm going to share those for sure. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, we want you to be able to observe eclipses safely mm -hmm. and we want you to have fun with it and to come visit us and tell us all about it. Thank you. Yeah. Stop my share and go back to you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really great sites. I love those. It reminds me of what I saw after 2012. I actually did go to the path of annularity during a 2012 annular eclipse because in 1994, I didn't live in the path of annularity. Um, I was, I think, shown a shoebox picture um, at the time, um, so so I didn't get to a chance to see that at the time. But in 2012, I remember somebody posted a video to YouTube of uh, the eclipse when it was partial where they lived, and you were seeing how the uh, sunlight was passing through tree leaves onto a driveway and a house, uh, like on the garage door, and the wind was blowing. So you're seeing all these little crescents just flowing all over the area that's being filmed, and it was just, just utterly mesmerizing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to share the picture that unless you want to share it that that um picture you go that, ahead because you've got a better connection okay okay this was a photo that uh um i think it's my face that's showing up right now <laughs> next to it but it was really eric's uh um that uh gave, shared this picture with me could you go ahead and just describe it yeah so we were in um just north of albuquerque at the time uh, earlier in the day, we were actually at the very large array down in Socorro. And uh, because we saw some clouds overhead, we weren't sure about how things were going to be. And 
um, we just decided to start driving north as, uh, uh, to, uh, to make sure that we would be in a path that would not have the sun be obscured by clouds. Um, we got to that part. We were watching the moon, the, the, uh, the moon pass over the sun over the course of that time. And then we drove out to a spot where we could uh, get some elevation um, off of the interstate. Um, I think it's I-25 there. And, and Susan, my wife, was taking these photos and got all these photos of the moon passing over the sun getting into a full uh, ring, the annulus right there. And then as it uh, was just departing, we didn't get the end of the eclipse because as you can see at the end there, the sun is starting to get really orange and so on because it actually was setting. And so that's what that last photo is. It's, it's a picture of the setting sun because she could no longer get any shots of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really great illustration because it's also showing uh, how much um, how much of the atmosphere the sunlight was having to pass through. So it's really, uh, it really was uh, getting a lot dimmer and you're seeing a lot less of the uh, colors of yellow and of course not much green. Usually if you get a picture of the sun, it looks pretty white as a matter of fact uh, from the ground around here, um, especially if it's high up in the sky. All right. Um, anything else that you wanted to uh, mention? I see that uh, um, I was able to put the other browser up while you were describing that and could see that uh, Jeff chimed in with uh, some chat on the uh, uh, on the YouTube chat about the um, cloud cover uh, chances in the different locations for uh, for April. So that's pretty pretty handy to handy to have. Yeah, I think on average, it's about 60% cloud cover um, around that date. So, so that's not 100%, but it's certainly not zero. So yeah, that's why I've tried to tell people if they have the ability to try to travel south, it's a lot more likely to be clear in Texas or Mexico. True, true. Uh, any parting words? Uh, Eric, do you want to mention anything that we have coming up here at the planetarium maybe in the next few weeks? I believe we're renting a laser system, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, so we we do have a laser system we're renting. We uh, last did this uh, about five years ago. So we're really happy to be able to offer this type of programming um, back in the dome once again. Um, and we've got a variety of shows that we're offering uh, to all of you, um, all sorts of uh, pop music that is. Um, and we've got a show devoted to Halloween songs. We've got some shows devoted to acts like the Beatles, Queen, Led Zeppelin, um, Pink Floyd. Uh, we'll also have Prince and Beyonce and Taylor Swift uh, during this as well. It's it's we're really excited about what we can offer to all of you uh, for this. Uh, we hope you can join us for uh, one or two of these shows. And if you have suggestions for what we might offer for a future rental, um, we'd be happy to hear them. Um, maybe yeah, maybe we can bring your uh, your preferred show into the dome as well. All right. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, anyone who's uh, watched this either live or uh, in the replay. Um, hope to hope to see you out here. And uh, let's let's hope for some let's hope for some sunshine on Eclipse Day. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for setting this up, Wayne Lena. And did you show everybody your uh, annual per eclipse? I guess your shirt. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I guess that is kind of eclipsy. Uh, you got a <laughs> cap trying to obscure the view there. Yeah, this was yeah. one of the earliest of the Space Cat shirts that yeah. Uh, yeah. that I started with. All right. Well, I, I needed a bad pun for it. I couldn't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll sign off with this edition of Starkle Live Eclipse Chat. See you later.